Okay, boys and girls, so we're going to do the science assignment for today. Um, it consists of two readings and questions that go along with the readings, so they're not so bad. So let's begin. As we all know, we should be on class pages, we should be on science, and week one assignments. We have already done the first three, one, two, three, and we did the last one. Now we're down to the last two. Some of you have already completed them, so good. Thank, thank you for that. When you click on both of them, they're going to download, and then they're going to pop up. So um, I have the older ver version of um, Windows, so my PDF file you can't write in, but if I'm not mistaken, you guys will be able to write in this and uh, or you could just print it out and write with pencil or you could just use your LAL notebook and just write the answers in there. I don't care how you do it, as long as you do it. Um, so this story is Mercury. It's all about the planet Mercury by Justin Moy. Before the 1970s, people didn't know much about the planet Mercury. They knew that Mercury was the smallest planet in our solar system and the closest to the sun. They also knew that the planet orbited the sun in only 88 Earth days, faster than any other planet in the solar system. In the 1970s, scientists sent a space probe to fly by Mercury and take photographs of the planet. The probe wasn't able to take photos of the entire planet, but scientists were able to learn more than they ever had before. A second probe, called Messenger, was launched in 2004. For a few years, it collected a lot of data on Mercury. Now scientists know much more about Mercury. Mercury is only a little bigger than Earth's moon. In fact, Mercury's surface even has craters like the Earth's moon. Comets and meteorites have hit the planet, leaving dents or pits on its surface. These are called impact craters. There are also some differences between Mercury and Earth's moon. One major difference is that Mercury's surface has curved cliffs. Earth's moon doesn't have them. Astronomers think these cliffs are a sign that the planet has actually shrunk over time. A lot of the facts scientists know about Mercury are from the space probes sent there. However, no one has ever been sent to the planet it is so close to the sun that it would be dangerous for anyone to go there. Maybe one day, astronauts would be able to travel to the planet and study it. After you're done reading, you're going to go down to the questions and answer each question based on the story. So number one says, which is the smallest planet in our solar system? And if you go up, it says it in our first part. They knew that Mercury was the smallest planet in our solar system. So right there is your answer and just circle it. Number two, what two things does the author compare in the text? Number three, read these sentences from the text. So read these from the story and then answer your question here based on those sentences above. Number four, based on the text, why have no humans been sent to Mercury? Number five, what is the main idea of this text? So what is this whole story mainly about? Read these sentences from the text. So you're going to read those sentences. And then it's going to ask you, what does the word data mean using the context clue? So what does data mean? Then number seven, you're going to choose what would go in the blank right here out of these four choices. Number 8, 9, and 10 are full complete sentences, use your own words. In 1970s, what did the scientists send to fly by Mercury and take photographs? In 1970, scientists sent blah, 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 blah to fly by Mercury and take photographs. Please tell me what they sent. And again, it's up in the reading. Then the next one says, give one example of something scientists have learned about Mercury since sending space probes there. Something scientists have learned about Mercury since sending space probes there are, and tell me what they have learned from sending those space probes there. And then you have to say, it asks for evidence. I know this because it says in paragraph four or paragraph five or whatever paragraph you found, 
it says blah, 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 blah. So if it says evidence, you all know how to do evidence. We do it in class all the time. And the last question is, in general, why might scientists need to use space probes? I think scientists need to use space probes because blah, 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 blah. And it also asks for evidence. I think this because it says in the story that space probes, blah, 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 blah. So use your evidence. Like I said, on your computer, you might be able to type, type in this perfectly fine. If not, just print this out or just use your LAL notebook and write your sentences there. After you're done with this one, you have the Ice Age one, which is pretty much the same thing, except it's another story. So I'll quickly read Ice Ages and then I'll share with you the questions. So Ice Ages, this is a glacier, the picture. Have you ever heard the phrase Ice Age? It refers to a long period of time when glaciers and ice sheets cover large parts of the earth. We are actually living in an ice age right now. This ice age began about 2.5 million years ago. Today, large areas of ice cover regions of Antarctica, the Arctic, and Greenland. The climate changes multiple times during an ice age. It alternates between glacial periods and interglacial periods. During glacier periods of ice age, temperature, temperatures are much colder than they are today. Ice sheets and glaciers expand, covering more of the planet. These periods can last tens of thousands of years. The last glacial period started about 120,000 years ago and ended about 11,500 years ago. During interglacier periods of an ice age, the average global temperature increases. Ice sheets and glaciers get smaller. The climate is warmer and wetter than it is during the glacier periods. We are currently living in an interglacial period. It started about 11,500 years ago, when the last glacier period ended. During an, in, during an ice age, glacier periods generally last longer than the interglacial period. Scientists don't completely understand what causes ice ages, but they do believe that one important factor is the amount of light Earth receives from the sun. When the northern part of the world receives less sun, sunlight, temperatures drop and more water freezes into ice. This can lead to a start of an ice age. When the northern part of the world receives more sunlight, temperatures rise and ice sheets melt. This can lead to the end of an ice age. However, there are many factors too, including changes in water flow of our oceans. Scientists are working to learn more about how different factors may cause an ice age to begin and end. The current ice age we're in is not the first the earth has experienced. At least five major ice ages have occurred throughout earth's history. The earliest one started over two billion years ago. So again, just like the last, just like the last reading, you have questions. It's going to be the same questions, 10 questions with three of them being full complete sentences where you have to write. So number one, throughout the earth, earth's history, there have been long periods of time when glaciers and ice sheets covered the Earth's parts of the Earth. What are these periods called? And circle your answer. It's the title of the story, guys. The text, text describes and compares the glacier periods and the interglacial periods of an ice age. What is one way these periods are different? Remember, in I think the second paragraph, it talks about how these periods are different. So make sure you go back. Number three, the earth has undergone many changes throughout history. What information from the text best supports this statement, this sentence? So which one of these goes with the fact that the earth has undergone many changes through history? Select the right one. Number four, based on the information in the text, in the story, what can be concluded about the earth and the sunlight it received 2.5 million years ago? So what happened 2.5 million years ago with the earth and the sunlight? And circle the answer. You'll be able to find that in the reading. Number five is, sorry, I lost my spot. 
what is the main idea of this text? So what is this whole thing mainly about? Number six, read the sentence from the text. So you're going to read this sentence and then it's going to ask you what one word means, expand. And um, you can easily connect that to the water investigation we did when we used to do our science. So you should all know what expand means because we even used our hands to show what expand means. Number seven, you're going to read the sentence and tell me what would go in um, in that blank right over there. What would be the right way to grammatically put that sentence together? And here are your three open-ended questions where you have to write in full complete sentence. What happens when the northern part of the world receives less sunlight? You would say, when the northern part of the world really receives less sunlight, blah, 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 happens. Number nine. Describe two ways glacier periods to compare to the interglacial periods. Use information from the text. Now tell me the differences between the glacier periods and the interglacial periods. There's a whole part, a whole paragraph dedicated to how they are different and how they are alike. So you're going to say two ways glacier periods compared to interglacial periods are blah, 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 blah. I know this because it says in the text, blah, 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 blah. So make sure you use your evidence. Number 10, how might the way the earth is today compare to the, the way it was 100,000 years ago? Use the text to support your answer. So the earth today, you would say, um, compared to 100,000 years ago, Earth, blah, 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 and tell me all about how the Earth was compared to 100,000 years ago, how they are different now, and then use the text to support your answer. So again, please do this in your notebook. You can um, print this out and write in it, or you could test it out on PowerSchool to see if you can actually type in it, but unfortunately, I can't do that. So I will be sending your parents both of these and remind yourself to make sure you do both of them, not just one. And then that's it for science.